hi and welcome to this sample tutorial on painting the summertime crawfish. If you're a Masterclass member, this pattern is covered in full in Lesson 34, so go and watch it there. But for everybody else, this is a summary um, to, to get you started. Now the lure we're painting today is actually one of our Masterclass project lures. It's called the Little Tuffy. It's a square build um, Western Red Cedar crankbait with a low tone rattle. And you can hear that rattle there, ideal for the crawfish pattern. So to start with, I've prepared my lure in the normal wet manner. So it's been hardened, it's been sealed, uh, and it's been undercoated, ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a tan uh, colour, and I'm going to make that darker on the back and lighter down the sides. And I'm using auto air paints all the way through here, guys. So to mix this colour up, I'm using transparent red oxide and transparent blue, and I've reduced it right down so that I get a nice even smooth coating with no spattering. I want it to be a very consistent um, colour. As you can see, a little bit darker on the shoulders and tapering away and blending into the white belly as you can move down the side of the lure. I'm heat setting this with a hairdryer. And then I'm going to move on to the belly. And for the belly I use uh, semi-opaque auto air paint. And the reason I use semi-opaque is I want to get some good coverage there and I want to blend it so that it just covers up the white on the belly and just on the, the bottom edge of the lure side. So you can see there it's quite an intense yellow and that's exactly what I'm after. Next I'm going to use a little bit of transparent flame red to create a little bit of orange around the throat of the lure. This is optional um, but it, it does give the lure a very attractive appearance. Now when you're using transparent paints uh, I reduce mine down around about 40 parts, 40% 40 paint, 60% reducer and I um, crank the air pressure right down. So I'm spraying this at around about 10 to 15 PSI. So that's the basic colours laid down and what's left to do now is to put the, the shell on the carapace of the crayfish. So these stencils, if you're a Masterclass member, you can download and, and print these, but they're pretty simple stencils, so you can make them yourself if you're not a Masterclass member. So once again, I'm using the transparent red oxide. This time I've just toned it with a drop of transparent black paint uh, to give it a little bit darker coloration. And I've reduced this one right down. It's 60% reducer, 40% paint. And I've got the air pressure on the compressor turned down to about five PSI. Now you might notice that the other thing I've done is I've removed the cap from the needle on the airbrush and I do that because I get a much cleaner spray at these lower pressures when I'm doing detail. One of the things to know about spraying this type of stencil is that you don't actually aim the airbrush at the, at the lure itself, you're actually aiming at the stencil and what you're trying to do is get the overspray to, to form the um, nice graded um, clear pattern that you, you see on the side of this lure. So what I'll do is I, I point the airbrush just at the bottom of that curve on the, on the stencil and I just give it a very light spray and I'll take the stencil away and check and see how much overspray has gone onto the lure and I'll, I'll do it again until I get the desired effect. So as you can see just building it up because we're using transparent paint you can do it a little bit at a time until you get the effect that you're after. Now I've made the carapace shell on this particular lure fairly short. If you want to you can extend this stencil up, you can go right up over the back of the lure if you want to so that the, um, the carapace comes right up over the side of the lure. I've kept it a little bit more subtle and that's just my personal taste. It's up to you how you go about it. So there are four stencils here that I'm using. The first one lays down the scallops and I use those scallops then to index all the rest of the stencils. Um, and then each successive stencil um, creates the next part of the carapace shell. So once again heat setting between each coat with a, a, a hair dryer just to make sure the paint's really well bedded down. And then I can just go back with each of the stencils and just touch up if I want to make um, any part of that pattern a little bit more bold or a little bit clearer. that's the carapace laid down. The next thing to do is to just lay a little bit of spatter over the top and I want to do this on the sort of top two-thirds of the side of the lure and I want it to be a fairly fine speckling. Now in the master class I, I um, have an, a tutorial where I go through several ways that you can do this. Uh, I'm using the Iwata um, spatter technique but there are others you can use if you're not using an Iwata airbrush. 
the paint once again is the same same color that I used to do the carapace so it's the red oxide tinted with black once the speckles done all that's left to do is to lay down the uh, green paint over the back and shoulders of the lure now I'm using uh, transparent bright green and I've toned that transparent bright green with just a little bit of pearlescent black now the reason I've toned a transparent paint with a semi um, opaque paint is that I do want to reduce that opacity a little bit so that it gets a little bit better coverage but I also want the I want the coloration of the black I want to, want to um, tint down the um, the, the brightness of the green a little bit but I also want to get a little bit of pearlescence so there's a little bit of sparkle in the back of that lure to give it some some life and you can see because the paint is still reasonably transparent uh, I'm laying down a number of coats now once again I've, I've reduced this paint right down and that means I work at lower air pressure and I put on a lot of coats and the reason I do it that way as you can see I get no spatter and I get a very nice even um, coat of paint that grades very smoothly from the green into the sides which are beige or tan. So that's the lure at the end of the, uh, the process. I've given this a coat of clear acrylic uh, which I often do before I overcoat with epoxy and this will now get three coats of clear epoxy to, to finish it off. There's the finished lure. Look, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was very, very brief, I know. If you want more information, please check out the Crankbait Masterclass. I've got a special deal running right now, so take advantage of that at the link below. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.